how's it going guys? I'm Misi from ECTV, and in this brand new video today, I will be focusing on the Russian culture. Now the reason why I'm doing this is because about a week or two ago, my world geography teacher gave the entire class an assignment. That assignment being to pick any culture from around the world and then present it. My partner and I chose Russia as a good culture to present. Fast forward a week or two, and here it is, the final product, the grand masterpiece. This, of course, being a school project on Russian culture. So without further suspense, let the video commence. In Russia, a handshake is seen as almost the same as in the United States. There are a few minor differences, however. Some of these being the fact that one should not use both hands when doing a handshake, as it can come off dishonest. If you're looking to confuse citizens in Russia, the OK sign is a great way to do so. This is because in Russia, the OK sign has no meaning, kind of like if a Russian made a fig symbol in the United States. In the past, making a fig symbol in Russia was as serious as flipping someone off the modern United States. Now, however, its meaning has been dulled down and is often used as an insult by elementary school children. When speaking, Russians typically stand much closer to one another than in the United States. Standing closely to somebody when talking shows interest in what the other person is saying. This doesn't mean that you should stand too close to somebody, however, as this can creep some people out. While this picture isn't of truly traditional Russian clothing, it's still Russian, which is why it is being shown on screen. Speaking of traditional Russian clothing, most traditional Russian clothing is handmade, which is actually quite neat. Traditional clothing is most often used when dancing or for celebrations. It can also be worn regularly, but this is a less common use of traditional clothing. Something that might be even more old-fashioned is that northern Russian clothing can sometimes be made out of animal hide. Animal hide, for those of you who don't know, is the skin of dead animals. Man, it actually kind of sounds creepy now I put it that way. Anyways guys, Russian traditional clothing is a more well-known Russian cultural trait and it is a great source of pride in the Russians who like to connect with their cultural roots. Another more well-known aspect of Russian culture is dancing, of which there are many types. Two examples are Korovod dancing and Berenya dancing. Korovod dancing is a type of dance that is said differently in different countries. In Russia, however, it is still called Korovod dancing, so that is the way that I will say it in this video. The dance is unique in the fact that it combines dancing and singing into one dance. Another Russian dance is the Burenya, which translates to landlady. Dancers repeat the phrase Burenya, Burenya, Suderenya, Burenya, which means landlady, landlady, madame, landlady, throughout the dance. All this while stomping and squatting. Just like traditional Russian clothing, Russian dancing is most often used during celebrations. The tradition of Russian drama started way back in the 1100s. Unlike dancing and clothing, Russian drama does not differ greatly from that of other countries. The only major difference is that as far back as 1721, it was required for students of schools that believe in a religion to take part in funny plays at least two times per year. In Russia, most Russians eat food similar to that of the United States. Since this video is about Russian culture, however, I will focus on the uniquely Russian foods and drinks, of which there are many. As many of you already know, vodka is a popular Russian alcoholic drink. As a matter of fact, it is so popular that it is even sold in the United States. Some traditional Russian foods include blini and panchiki. Blini is small pancakes served with caviar, which is fish eggs, fish, butter, or sour cream. Panchiki is hot donuts that have sugar sprinkled on them. Something that's quite well known about Russia is that from 1917 to 1991, Russia has lived under communism. Communism is when the government collects everyone's earnings and then distributes it to the rest of the population equally. This is unlike capitalism where people get to keep their earnings to themselves. During the days of communism, Russia's government was stationed in the Kremlin, as shown in this image. 
Today, Russia no longer has communism, but rather capitalism. Russia's president has remained the same since the year 2000, that president being Vladimir Putin. Russia's prime minister is Dmitry Medvedev, who has been prime minister since 2012. In Russia, the president not only represents the country, but also leads the military. The prime minister, on the other hand, takes care of the people who help regulate the insides of Russia. The Russian language has a long history, so I'll explain it as briefly as possible. The Russian language was created a short time before the year 10,000, when numerous tribes in what would now be Western Russia created a common language. This made sharing ideas between the tribes easier. As the tribes came together to form what would now become Russia, the language was only spoken, as a system of writing in Russia hadn't come about yet. This all changed when Russia adopted Christianity and decided to start printing Bibles. The language remained completely unchanged up until the early 1900s, and the latest change to the language took place in the 1970s. Despite Russian being the official language in Russia, many other languages are used. Some of these include languages belonging to native tribes, as well as European languages such as French. <laughs> In Russia, there are a lot more holidays than there are in the United States. One of the oldest Russian holidays is Maslanitsa, which marks the end of the Russian winter. It features the eating of foods such as caviar, pancakes, nuts, and other foods. Some drinks that are served during Maslanitsa include tea and vodka. <laughs> Russia has seen many books that have helped to influence its past. Two examples are A Hero of Our Time by Mikhail Lumontov and Mother by Maxim Gorky. Before the 1840s, most Russian books were either short stories or poems. Mikhail Lumontov's novel A Hero of Our Time changed that, however. It did this by becoming popular, which led to more and more authors writing full books. Maybe one of the reasons why it became so popular in the first place is because the main character had to live up to unrealistic expectations. This made many readers able to relate to the main character. Another example of a good Russian book is Mother by Maxim Gorky. This book is influential in a different way than the one before. This is because Mother pointed out the flaws of living under the Tsar or Russian king. This would then go on to influence the rise of communism in 1917, which would change Russia forever. <laughs> There are many different types of music that are listened to in Russia. A few popular types are rock, pop, western top 40, techno, and electronica. Some rock bands that are well known in Russia include the Rolling Stones and the Offspring. Although I've never personally listened to the Rolling Stones, I do enjoy listening to the Offspring. Anyways, Russian pop music is a lot like 90s boy band music in the United States, where the tunes are catchy and the plot usually has to do with love. Western Top 40 is exactly how it sounds. It's the top 40 most popular songs from the United States, but it's played in Russia. Two more popular types of music are techno and electronica. Some popular techno and electronica music producers in Russia include Nina Kravitz, Oti, and Bobina. Many Russians like to camp in cozy little cottages called dachas. More exciting ways many Russians like to pass the time include motorbiking, football, and hockey. Ice cream is an important part of Russian culture. Some people may even say that Russia has been making ice cream since the 900s. A group of people in Russia known as the Buryats enjoy practicing shooting with a bow. Most Russian culture is practiced in Russia, which is shown on the image. Something that we needed to do in the assignment our teacher gave us was to explain what each element of culture was and then to show how they united and divided Russia. So if you don't know what the elements of culture are, then keep listening as I tell you. The first element of culture is social organization, which is how society is organized. Shortly before the rise of communism in 1917, Russia was divided into the upper, middle, and lower class, much like seen in the United States today. 
However, many lower and some middle class people weren't too happy with this, so they rebelled against the government. This led to Russia becoming united under communism. The second element is language, which was a set of words and rules that people used to talk or chat with one another. The Russian language unites Russia by giving Russians something that they share, that is the fact that they speak Russian. The Russian language divides Russia from the rest of the world by giving the country of Russia its own unique language. This means that someone from, say, France couldn't just walk in and talk with someone who has lived in Russia their entire life. The third element of culture is customs and traditions, which is habits that are passed down to children from their parents. Customs and traditions have united Russia much in the same way that language has, by giving Russians something that they have in common with each other. Customs and traditions has divided Russia from the rest of the world also in the same way that language has. Since the Russian customs and traditions are so unique, many non-Russians have little to no clue about Russia's customs and traditions. The fourth element of culture is religion. Religion is a set of beliefs that try to explain how the universe works and sometimes may include one or more gods. The religion of Christianity has united Russia by giving most Russians a set of common beliefs. This, however, divides them from people in Russia who don't follow their religion. This is because people who follow other religions don't always have the same beliefs that Christians have. The fifth element of culture is arts and literature. Arts and literature are both objects that are made by humans to either teach or entertain an audience. Arts and literature, like many of the other elements of culture, have united the Russians by giving them something in common with one another. Also like many of the other elements, arts and literature divides Russia from the rest of the world because Russian arts and literature is unique to Russia. This means that people who aren't Russian don't even know that these works of art and literature exist, which then means that they have less in common with Russians. The sixth element is government and law. Government and law is how people are controlled, as to prevent people from killing each other and doing other terrible crimes. Like social organizations, government and law has also divided Russia shortly before the rise of communism. This is because the people who didn't like the Tsar kept protesting and saying that the Tsar should be removed from power, but the people who wanted the Tsar to stay in power kept trying to stop the protesters. After the rise of communism, however, Russia was united because most people were fine with communism. The seventh element is economic systems. Economic systems is a system that the government uses to control a nation's money. Economic systems united Russia because when Russians were living under communism, many Russians were united in the belief that communism was good for their nation. Economic systems divided Russia because after Russia stopped using communism, some Russians felt as if they wanted to return to using communism. Others, however, wanted to try out capitalism. Alright guys, that seems to be about it for this project on Russian culture. If you learned something about Russian culture, then please don't forget to leave a like to let others know. And if you want to see more of my content, then subscribe and click on the notification bell button that's next to the subscribe button. Also, if there's something that I missed, then please politely let me know in the comment section down below. And as always guys, I wish you all the best, and until next time, I'm EC from ECTV, out. And peace.